Hi guys, and this is our video on why you shouldn't vote for a third party candidate. And we realized that this video is gonna be very contentious in the comment section, so we made this introductory explanation. So yeah, we just last, week before last, were at a taping of TYT on Fusion. I was one of the co-hosts there, and John and Jordan had this debate, Hillary or not Hillary. What John is advocating for there is that we look at this as a question of ideology versus practicality. Now, ideologically, we might all want Jill Stein, Gary Johnson, or anyone but Hillary Clinton. There's a lot of people running for the presidency that we don't talk about. Many of those people would be good, great folks to have in there. However, we live in a system where we're gonna wake up on election day and one of only two people is gonna be president, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. And there's no chance that in the next few weeks we're gonna be able to swing that. And that really sucks because the US electoral system is broken and we wanted to explain how it's broken in our video. So you hate Trump, but you also just can't bring yourself to vote for Hillary. Maybe you're one of the Bernie crew, or maybe you just hate the shit show that American politics has become. I don't blame you. And so this election, you're thinking of voting for a third candidate, someone independent. I mean, there's a few good ones out there. What about Jill Stein from the Greens party? She wants to cancel student debt and make US energy 100% renewable by 2030. That's amazing. Or Libertarian Party nominee Gary Johnson. Libertarians are great. But before you vote independent, consider this cautionary tale. The year was 2000. The election? Bush versus Gore. A lot of progressives didn't exactly agree with Gore's policy. Gore just wasn't progressive enough. He was Clinton's vice president, so he couldn't run on a platform of progressive change because he was part of the establishment. And he didn't have as strong a record on the environment as many green voters wanted. He hadn't made an inconvenient truth at that point. And whilst he did support reform, he didn't advocate for things like free universal health care, free education for everyone, or increasing the minimum wage. So at the 2000 election, many Democrat voters who didn't really like Gore, but obviously weren't going to go and vote for Bush, decided to vote for a third party candidate the Greens Party, led by Ralph Nader. This seemed like a really great idea at the time. Ralph is awesome. He spoke about campaign finance reform, something that's very close to my heart and the hearts of everyone at the Young Turks. He campaigned for environmental justice and workers' rights and drug legalization, all of those really good things. And that's probably why he did so well in the election, getting almost 3% of the overall vote. But, no one who voted for Nader realized at the time that the year 2000 would be one of the closest elections in American history. The election was so close, it ended up having to be decided in the Supreme Court in George Bush's favor. Now, we'll never know what type of president Gore would have been. We'll never know if he could have prevented 9-11. But we do know that he probably wouldn't have declared war on Iraq in America's longest war. He wouldn't have had people like Dick Cheney in his ear, so we probably wouldn't have the Patriot Act. And he probably wouldn't have condoned torture as an interrogation technique. We'll never know for sure how President Gore would have reacted to the economic crash of the early 2000s, but we do know that Vice President Gore left office with a healthy budget surplus. We don't know how he would have defended the environment, but we do know that he believed in climate science, unlike Bush, who spent eight long years fighting against climate science and dismantling the EPA. The horrible truth is that we'll never know what type of president Al Gore would have been because George W. Bush won the election. And the only reason he won the election is because of left-leaning voters handing Bush the election by voting for Nader. Wait, Bush won because people voted for Nader? I don't get it. See, America has what's called a first-past-the-post system, which means whoever has the most votes wins the election. But there's a big problem with this system. It leads to having only two major parties, the Republicans and the Democrats. These two parties have won every presidential election for 150 years. Wait, but why can't third parties like the Greens get elected? So here's the point. In America, third parties almost never win anything due to what's called Dervidge's Law. Now, Dervidge's Law was named after Maurice Dervidge, a French political scientist, and it states that the US electoral system has a law-like tendency towards a two-party system. Dervidge discovered that any system where the candidate with the most votes wins, like America's system, will always marginalize smaller political parties, resulting in a two-party system. For example, imagine Beck and I are running for president of PsyQ. Jade, wants more episodes on physics, whereas Beck wants more episodes on sex. Most Psyche viewers love sex, so Beck is the most popular candidate. However, 
a third candidate comes along, Miz who wants to do videos focused on sex and technology. Now, the combination of sex and tech is unusual, and Miz isn't super popular with the PsyQ voters, so there's no chance of him actually winning this election. But his presence can change the outcome of the election, because some of Beck's sex-loving fans might leave Beck to vote for Miz, just because they also like iPhones and Fitbits. This means that Beck's vote is split. And Jade, even though her physics-only plans are not very popular, ends up winning the election. This is called the spoiler effect. Splitting votes between candidates with similar ideologies and causing an unpopular opponent to actually win. This system doesn't seem very good. Well, the alternative is the preferential vote, like they have in Australia and most of Europe. The preferential vote lets you have preferences, which means if your preferred candidate doesn't win, your vote flows onto your second favorite candidate. So for example, if you, PsyQ viewer, love sex and you love tech, but you hate physics, you can safely vote for Miz as your preferred candidate. You know he probably won't win the presidency, but that's okay. If he gets eliminated, you're allowed to choose a second preference. In this case, you'd choose Beck, because even though she doesn't like tech, she does like sex. This is a much better system because it produces winners that a larger number of voters can agree on. Researchers following on from Derridge have linked the preferential voting system to higher scores on health, education, personal security, lower deficits and larger surpluses and less inequality, as well as better environmental protection. But in America, the two-party system is what we're stuck with for now. And this system is exactly why the Republicans let Donald Trump run as a Republican in the first place. They were terrified that if they were mean to him, he'd throw a big tanty and run as an independent. And that would split the Republican vote in half, resulting in Democratic victories basically everywhere. And that's why Democrats are so terrified of third parties like the Greens. All the polls suggest Hillary's probably going to beat Trump in a somewhat close election. But if people decide that Hillary isn't perfect enough, and they vote for a third party candidate like Jill Stein, they could accidentally hand the presidency to Trump. The unfortunate truth is that strategic voting is a necessity in a first past the post two party system. Bernie Sanders has already tried to secure his votes for the Democrats by urging his supporters to vote for Hillary. In his own words, you're gonna end up having a choice. Either Hillary Clinton is gonna become president or Donald Trump. But Donald is really eager to split the Democratic vote by urging people to vote for third parties. He's already said, I think a vote for Stein would be good because I figure anyone voting for Stein is gonna be for Hillary. So I think a vote for Stein is fine. That should be her new slogan. A vote for Stein is fine. Trump knows damn well that what he needs to win is a strong third party candidate, but don't fall for it. There's nothing wrong with just holding your nose and voting for the candidate that you believe has the best chance to defeat another candidate who you consider an existential threat to the country. A big part of US democracy is not about getting our preferred candidate in. It's about keeping the worst guys out. But what do you guys think? Do you disagree? Is there a third party that you'd want to vote for? Let us know in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.